Right off the top on Local 10 News at 6, Local 10 is live in Havana, Cuba, as we are just two days away now from the president's historic visit to the island. This will be the first visit to, the, to Cuba by a U.S. president in 88 years. We have live team coverage from Havana. Let's begin with Anchor Alvin Hughes. Well, a lot has led up between the two countries for this very moment. President Obama's visit, as you said, will mark the first American president coming here on Cuban soil in 88 years. And we saw something today that really sort of signifies how much change has taken place on the island. Let's take a look at a billboard that we saw earlier today. It simply says, welcome, but you see two pictures here, a picture between President Obama and President Castro side by side on that billboard. Now, a lot is going on with the Cuban government here in terms of trying to spruce up the place in time for the president's visit. He officially arrives here at 3 o'clock on Sunday. Let's take a look at how much change has taken place around Havana. You saw some lawns that are being spruced up, that are being manicured. Workers are, in fact, putting a fresh coat on buildings, a fresh coat of paint on some of those old buildings. Streets are getting repaved, but not all streets, especially in some neighborhoods, are getting repaired. In fact, many remain in disrepair. And we saw firsthand, too, how this is taking place. Now, day two for the president's visit will include a national speech for the Cuban people. Let's take a look. The president will make his final day on the island all about the Cuban people. At the National Theater next to Cuba's Capitol building, Obama will deliver a speech to several hundred people. The guests will include selected young people invited by the White House and dignitaries invited by the Cuban government. And the speech will be broadcast live on TV. Something unthinkable several years ago, and especially under the leadership of former Cuban leader Fidel Castro. The last time an American president visited Cuba was Calvin Coolidge in 1928, and he spoke at the National Theater 88 years ago. I asked some Cubans if the president's visit could lead to change. For the moment, things have changed, at least the image for the country and the people. I don't think there's much of a difference. Things seem to be exactly the same. In the afternoon, the president meets with a civil society, anti-government protesters, like the leader of the Ladies in White, who want more democratic reforms in Cuba, like free speech and the right to assemble without getting arrested, and more human rights. This man told me today he's with the ladies in white and says Obama's visit won't change much. At this moment in time, the political police and the government agencies, there's no change. There's always repression and a march of bad things. The change is for them, not for the people. Before leaving Cuba mid-Tuesday afternoon, President Obama will attend a baseball game between the Cuban national team and the Tampa Bay Rays, the first time an American League team has played in Cuba since 1999. Well, this is a very interesting picture here. Another president has arrived in Cuba first, the president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, arriving for what he says is official business. Venezuela is a longtime partner and supplier of oil to Cuba. Now, Tuesday, the president will have a very important meeting with the civil society. We're talking about anti-government protesters, people who are called the dissidents here. And Miami exiles, no doubt, will have their eyes on that meeting and whom the president is going to be meeting with. In fact, who specifically the president will be meeting with. But one person we know has a lot to say about that is Antonio Rodiles. And he met today with our Hatzel Vela, who had a chance to sit down with him. And what did he have to say about this upcoming visit by the president? You know, so many things, so many feelings, because you think about this. Antonio Rodiles has been looking forward to something like this. Uh, and he talked, we sat down for maybe half an hour about some of the expectations that he hopes to see when the president comes. Uh, he also talked about the meeting on Tuesday. He says he has officially been reached out to uh, and that there will be a high profile meeting on Tuesday. He could not confirm if the president's going to be there, but he says he has a lot to say if he is indeed there at this meeting. What do you say to him? I will tell to him that uh, Cuba need to be respected. Cuba need to be free. This is what Antonio Rodiles hopes to tell President Barack Obama. Rodiles, a political activist, is one of several people who has been invited to meet with high-ranking U.S. officials Tuesday, likely the President of the United States. Well, I think that the main point here in Cuba right now is the topic of the human rights and the promotion of democracy. Rodiles says some people are wrong when they say the economy is a tool to get to democracy. If we don't have freedom, you cannot talk about anything. Even the situation now is worse than before. How? 
because they are more violent. Repressions and arrests are up, he says. The Commission of Human Rights in Cuba reports more than 8,500 arrests in 2015. In addition to Rodiles, here are other dissidents reportedly invited to meet with Obama. Berta Soler of the Ladies in White, Guillermo Fariñas, Jose Daniel Ferrer, Joanny Sanchez, and Miriam Leiva. We Cubans also has a dream, and our dreams is freedom. Rodiles referring to Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech and the Civil Rights Movement. What do you hope his visit accomplishes? To open a way for the freedom of Cubans. Rodiles says, like every Sunday, he will be there with the ladies in white at Santa Rosita. That's the uh, church that they always march in, uh, in, 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 in Miramar, I should March, say. Yeah. He doesn't know what to expect. Uh, he thinks there might be some arrest, but at this point, you know, it's all speculation. Well, you, you bring up an interesting point because earlier today we heard about uh, the fact that the Cuban police were in fact going to the homes of some of the dissidents and cracking down on them, telling them not to leave their homes before the president comes here. Dordilas did talk about that. He said that he has heard from several of his counterparts around, not just in Havana, but throughout the island, that a lot of harassment, a lot of phone calls being made to these dissidents, told not to leave their house, right. that they're going to be arrested. So we'll see what happens. Is it true that Berta Soler got a, pres uh, got a letter from the president? Uh, that, right? that is what we hear. Local yeah. 10 did report that earlier yeah. this week. Uh, so we should see what kind of interaction happens between her and the president. Okay, our hats of Bella on the story today. Thank you so much. Thank we also have something to show you here. The baseball game, of course, coming up on Tuesday. Something everyone is going to be watching. The Tampa Bay Rays between the Cuban National Baseball Team. The 55,000-seat Latin American Stadium has been under renovation for two weeks now. The last game played between the Major League Team, an American Major League Team, and the Cuban National Team was in 1999, and the Baltimore Orioles won that game. Also, Friday is going to be a big day. The president is going to be out of here by that time. He leaves on Tuesday. But keep in mind, Friday, more than a million people are expected to attend a concert. Let's take a look at this big stage that's been going up in a big field here in Havana. We're talking this has been going on now for some two weeks as workers have been trying to put up the stadium here, making sure the lights will work for this iconic band to come here. It is a very famous band, as we know. Everyone loves the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger. So, of course, that's going to happen on Friday, and Hatzavella is going to be there at that concert. And we'll have a lot more on that story, obviously, coming up on Friday. But for now, reporting live from Havana, I'll send it back to you in the studio. Okay, Calvin, thank you so much. A busy time for you and the president. We know you're going to be there every step of the way. We will continue our live coverage of the president's historic visit to Cuba on Local 10 News at 11. Look for Calvin, Hatzel, and Victor Okendo, who will have more reports for you straight from the island. We'll also have live coverage of the president's arrival to Cuba on Sunday during a special weekend edition of Local 10 News at 4.